Hi there, and welcome to another edition of the ChannelBuzz.ca podcast. I'm Robert Tutt, editor of ChannelBuzz.ca, and as usual, your host for the podcast. When you think of Lenovo, what's the first thing you think of? Uh, Did you say cloud? No? Well, I guess this week are seeking to change that. Uh, Yeah, I I think most of us think of PCs first when we think of Lenovo, the nearly ubiquitous ThinkPad line of notebooks in particular. Um, But it's another more recent purchase from Big Blue that has Lenovo thinking cloud. That being, of course last year's acquisition of IBM's X server lineup. Uh, for this edition of the podcast, we're joined by Stefan Bockhoff, director of channels at Lenovo Canada, and Don Frame, brand director of the data center group at Lenovo. Um, they'll not only make the case for Lenovo in the data center, but in fact present their argument that the company has an advantage in this space because of what they bring to market and perhaps importantly, what they haven't heretofore brought to market. That is a legacy data center products group. So please... Join me, Stefan and Don, for a very interesting conversation about Lenovo and the future of the data center. All right, we are joined now by Don Frame, data center group brand director for Lenovo North America, and Stefan Bockhop, director of channels for Lenovo Canada. Gentlemen, thanks for taking the time. Thanks so much. We appreciate uh, talking to you guys today. Good to see you, Robert. Um, always, a, always a pleasure, sir. Always a pleasure. Um, to throw it open, we wanted to talk a little bit about about cloud and, and cloud strategy, and certainly, you know, going back um, in, into the past a little bit. Maybe not something that we'd be talking about with Lenovo, but things have things have changed over the last couple of years. And, and Don, I just wanted to kind of give you a chance to um, throw it open with the an overall view of the Lenovo cloud strategy, where you're at today, and, and where you see the market. Absolutely. Well, let me let me explain why it matters to us first, because you kind of uh, were alluding to that. Why it matters to us is, as you guys know, we are number one in the world in, in PCs. We're, we're uh, you know, number one in PC Plus, what we call PC Plus tablet. And so the devices on the front end are, 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 are proliferating uh, <clears throat> at a rate that is absolutely exponential. And what enables all of those devices, what some people call the Internet of Things, mm-hmm. Um, is is IT? It is a is an is an IT infrastructure um, that is that is going to have to be uh, flexible and agile and, and be able to adjust to what's happening on the front end. We saw that happening. Everybody sees that happening. That was the reason we decided to invest significantly um, in, in in jumping into the data center business. Um, and we've done that with the acquisition of the uh, IBM server assets. Um, just over a year ago. Um, so we see it as critical um, for every company to be able to take advantage of the proliferation of devices to make them, you know, to use, make them useful, absolutely. Maybe let's look at where in that journey um, you see a lot of your customers and, and where you see Lenovo helping out. Yeah, where Lenovo, I think, can help out is we, again, with a, with a, a significant understanding of, of IoT and the devices on the front end, mm-hmm. what we want to do with with customers on their infrastructure is to not just talk about enabling cloud because it sounds cool. Um, what we want to do is, is is provide them with an agile and flexible IT infrastructure, um, and we think we can do that by laying those foundations, which which we call the foundation pieces of being the software-defined data center, um, foundational technologies that allow for a more dynamic um, a, a, a infrastructure that is that could be on demand, that could expand or contract based on the exact you know um, workloads that are going on at any particular moment of the day. But we realize that you know enabling a cloud infrastructure is not simple. In some sense, it's only held out to the biggest companies that have the huge IT staff, like a Google or Facebook uh, a type of, of, uh, of company. But, you know, most companies, you know, 75% of their staffs are not IT. We, mm-hmm. we understand that. Um, so we want to try to bring that ability, what I call cloud economics, we want to try, we'll try to bring cloud economics to businesses of all sizes Um, And we believe that we can do that with the foundational technologies that we are creating, but also specifically around the key partnerships um, that we are are enabling and rededicating ourselves to. All right. Um, And and one of the way I think businesses that aren't um, the Googles and Facebooks and that, you know, that 75 percent IT stance that you uh, you describe there have have done this in the past or have have thought about this is, of course, public cloud. And and you're you're 
sending a more a more hybrid message. Um, can you can you kind of walk us through what you see as as the benefits of the the hybrid cloud, the the um, on site cloud, as it were? Yeah, so, so so your private cloud is really what we're trying to implement with the mm -hmm. ability to be able to, to burst out um, when you need it in that, that hybrid um, perspective or hybrid approach. But if we think about what's going on in terms of us in the world around security um, and, and control of your data, people want that. They want to be able to control and have um, the, the, the apply their, their security levels to um, what is going on in their infrastructure and to the most important thing that they have, which is their, their data. Um, and then there's other things as well. You think about uh, the, the regulatory things that are going on in industry around healthcare, around some of the higher ed education or public sector spaces. Um, you can't just put things in a, in, a, in, a, in a public cloud. Now, beyond that, we believe there's efficiencies that can be had that people don't realize that we can bring to the table with some of our key partnerships that uh, we can talk about that will actually enable a private or hybrid cloud to be more efficient than a public cloud. Um, so we think we can accomplish both. We think we can accomplish security, control, central mechanism, the ability to be in a, a very agile and, and on-demand infrastructure, but do that um, so you can actually own it yourselves and make sure you protect what is the most important asset, the data that any company possesses. All right. A couple of times, Don, you've, you've touched on the partnerships that you have in this in this place. I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask. Can you can you kind of take us through the highlights of of some of those partnerships in this space that allow um, yourselves and, and your channel partners to to bring this story together and take it to customers? Absolutely. So uh, let me start off with VMware, who has been a partner uh, with us for for a number of years. Um, but we are working deeply with them now. We are, Lenovo is the only uh, VMware OEM partner that is fully uh, supporting and integrating ourselves into their software-defined uh, data center strategy. And I'll give you a couple of examples of that in a minute. But we've been a partner with VMware for over 15 years. Um, we take what they do, we combine it with what we do, which is the number one uh, server quality and infrastructure quality products in the world, um, and we believe that that is going to deliver value for the customers. Specifically, with what we're doing around VMware, uh, VMware and their software-defined data center, um, we are fully integrating into their, their cloud stack. So we integrate our hardware resource manager, what we call XClarity, fully integrated not only into vCenter, their, their uh, virtualization uh, management console, we integrate all the way up into their orchestration tools uh, around vRealize, for example, vOrchestrator, fully integrated up their stack. So unlike uh, some of our competitors that want to pull you away from some of the, the VMware tools, so obviously they're supporting VMware from a virtualization standpoint. The vSphere is by far the number one virtualization tool that's out there, but they want to pull you away from that after that, that piece and pull you into their tools. Well, what we're doing is saying stay where you want to be. Uh -huh. You stay in using VMware for management of your uh, virtual environment and orchestration, and what we're doing with our hardware resource manager, XClarity, is integrating it fully up their stack. So you stay where you want to manage, and we integrate in where the customer wants to be instead of trying to pull them off uh, in, in, a, in a different direction that is more proprietary. Steph, would love to get your thoughts here um, on the on the Canadian side of, of this story and, and the market um, that you see for private cloud, uh, both both in the customer base and, and in your channel base here in Canada. Yeah, I'd say it's. I, I love listening to Don uh, kind of talk about the the marketplace because you know when I hear about um, the, the change, when I hear about the disruption of what was to be to moving to what will be, um, you know what I think about is a channel's always been really good at, and I think always will be really good at taking things that are new or that are uh, complicated or out of the reach of kind of that. You know, you talked about entities that don't have the gigantic IT staff to go and implement these things and saying, hey, listen, we can make this work for you. So that incredible flexibility, that incredible versatility, that easy, um, scalable deployment you're looking for in your IT solution, uh, we can do that. And so when I look at the market 
uh, in Canada, I think it's going to be a mix. There's going to be public and private. I think it, it, we're, we're, it's a foregone conclusion it's going to be a hybrid cloud market. And for many of the reasons Don talked about, regulatory or just the fact that the customer doesn't feel comfortable and, and that somewhat is an emotional decision saying, I don't want that out in the public. I want to keep that in my four walls. But I still want that wonderful flexibility that I get from that web scale type architecture. And so if I think of a channel partner looking at this landscape, looking at navigating this thing, how am I going to deliver value to my end customers, to my customers who want to deploy this stuff? And then I go look at the vendor community who I can go and partner with and figure out how I put this together. I think Lenovo looks fantastically attractive. So not only are we highly relevant already from a PC point of view, so we're highly relevant to our distribution channel, highly relevant in market from an endpoint client technology, um, but we we also have an extremely broad and diverse portfolio of enterprise products, of, of server, storage, and even networking product. And if you look at our focus on that new style IT, that new type of deployment, and the fact that we are very open and we have many partnerships, the one Don highlighted with VMware, but, but any other partnerships, uh, our business partners can look at and say, well, I'm really good at this, and Lenovo's hardware layered with you know, kind of this solution, this software, becomes a very um, valuable and very uh, resellable, if you will, or deployable for my customer set. So partners have choices. They look in the vendor community and say, I'm going to spend time. I'm going to invest in training my people. I'm going to invest in training my salespeople. I think we look fairly attractive financially from our program stack, which is traditionally very simple but quite lucrative in terms of access through distribution and incredibly the amount of partnerships we bring to bear just by being a Lenovo partner. You also gain access to some of these other partners that we're working with that have come to Lenovo and said, we like how you guys are approaching this. We like how you think. You don't have any baggage in the kind of traditional data center that's going to be a conflict for this, yeah. we'd love to work with you on these activities. So that's a pretty compelling conversation for an owner, for a sales team out there to say, hey, I want to be nimble, just like my customers are looking to be nimble. I want to be nimble in how I deliver value to my customers. Man, that Lenovo company, they look pretty good in terms of how I'm going to put that all together, deploy something and make some money while we're doing it. All right. And especially for those partners, um, who are who are early in this journey, perhaps the the smaller ones or the, or the folks who have in the past primarily worked with you guys on endpoint devices or or even to a to a lesser degree perhaps on uh, for those who've been working with you guys on the on the think server on the, the you know SMB kind of server offering. Um, what are you doing both both in Canada and writ large around enablement and training and, and helping folks take those those first steps as a partner to to define their own journey towards this this kind of a a flexible architecture? Yeah, I'd say there's there's a, there's three things that I think we're doing well, and we're going to continue to kind of accelerate out there. So, uh, one of the things we're doing well is we're investing in training for both our people who call upon these partners and our, and our uh, folks in in the market, but also offering those same training, those same modules, those same uh, informational uh, tools to our partners, aimed at both um, the sales people who are going to go and talk to the customer about the solution, but also at that SE level, um, and then. For example, one of our partners, uh, Nutanix, made available uh, their portfolio of training to our partner community. So if a, if a, a partner is looking at customers who are asking, hey, could I deploy this type of solution through their partnership with Lenovo, they also have access to some of this training uh, that Nutanix offers. That's something they maybe wouldn't have had access to had they not been a Lenovo partner and are taking advantage of that extended partnership for us. So, you know, we're giving them excellent training on both our hardware, but also opening up that wider aperture of, of kind of partner information. And then we, we're spending and, and continue to spend a lot of time out in markets, uh, making sure our partners are aware of our products. We have fantastic offers on a regular basis for our partners to take some of our technology into their house, put it through its paces, put it through the the, the kind of the meat grinder of your SEs. Um, and I will tell you, you know, uh, once uh, once somebody gets a hold of one of these uh, pieces of technology and just sees the the kind of uh, amazing engineering that goes into the base hardware platform, and then layers on some of these solutions, um, you get you get a convert pretty fast. Uh, 
I, I, I have trouble keeping track of all the kind of records we're breaking with our partners. I saw one last week from from uh, our friends at DataCore, um, some other ones coming out around uh, some of the other components we have. So what you have is this melding of a great hardware platform and this other uh, software that layers on that delivers that flexible IT. And now uh, our partners are going, hey, I got access to all this stuff, and they're showing me how to use it, showing me how to deploy it together to our customers. This is a fantastic value proposition. Uh, how do I do more? What's the next thing? When's the next time I can get Don Frame on a call and we can talk about the next thing in the market? All right. Um, to both of you, for, for partners who are still early in the process of um, of their journey to cloud and, and especially around converting to or, or adding on selling um, based on business outcomes and, and speaking that language, whether it's uh, horizontally or vertically within the business, any advice to partners on, on kind of first steps or, uh, or, or good steps to take to, to make that transition and, and to be successful there? Let, let me um, let me put something out, and I'll jump to uh, Steph on, on how they actually execute it. But um, related to what you're talking about, every size company, it doesn't matter what size they are, small, medium, or large size companies, they, real, they I hope they realize that they're going to have to transform their infrastructure if they want their business to grow. So mm. infrastructure no longer is something that you have to have just to, to do email or, or to, to, to have a database. It is going to be um, central to your ability to be able to grow your business. Uh, the people that transform their infrastructure uh, to be um, uh, something that's going to help them grow their products or services are going to be the ones that that, that win. And, and I'll give you a stat, and this is um, you know related to more than just IT, but uh, I'll give you a sense of the, the, the direction here of how fast uh, business is moving and changing. Um, the top 100 Fortune companies, or the Fort, uh, uh, Fortune 100 companies, they used to last 75 years. Mm -hmm. Now they last 15. Yep. Now, I realize yep. that, you know, that's not all IT related, but it shows you how quick business is moving now. And so customers of all sizes need to embrace the uh, uh, IT as a, as a business growth engine. Um, we believe that what we're doing with some of the things that we're doing with our foundational technologies and, and again, through our, our partnerships that we're bringing to bear is going to make IT uh, part of their business growth equation, not just something that they have to, to have to, to, to do some of their, their basic uh, uh, work functions. And, and let me answer from a partner point of view. Um, I, I firmly believe that a, that a hybrid uh, cloud model is the way we're going to end up uh, at, from a state, uh, from a kind of 2B state. And when you look at the economics of it, um, you know, putting something in a public cloud isn't always, uh, in most cases, it's not a, a lower cost model. Um, and so Don talked earlier about how do you make that efficiency? How do you show efficiency in doing it a kind of an on-prem or a private type cloud? I think if partners are looking at how do I get into this business, how do I have these conversations, uh, two pieces of advice. One is, you know, find something that you know that you can be very good at. You don't have to take over the world tomorrow if you're just kind of starting down this path. Find something that you're very good at, either a vertical or a workload or a technology or an outcome that you're very good at, and make sure that you can deliver uh, top-notch value to our mutual customer. And I hope that you know, that solution involves plenty of Lenovo hardware uh, and, and uh, in your deployment. The other side of it is, is the reality of where customers are consuming um, these, these IT solutions, it's not the same place they were consuming it 10 years ago. And so the reality is the customers you've been selling to that have mm -hmm. been the traditional purchasers of technology, maybe it's the IT manager, the CIO, um, they're not making all of these purchasing decisions. Customers that you've been transacting with and, and delivering IT technology to for the past you know, X number of years, whatever it is, if you only know the people in the IT part of that business, I would tell you that's a risk that you need to close. You need to go make sure that you're understanding the needs needs of that kind of wider aperture of customers in line of business. And I think those discussions will spur opportunities to say, oh, so marketing, you're looking to do X, and the deployment of that by necessity of how it's going to deploy needs a very scalable solution. Maybe there's a conversation you can have with that line of business 
an opportunity for you to bring your friends from IT at that house together and say, here's a solution we could do, very flexible, very scalable, that might involve one of our kind of new cloud architecture activities. So I'd say those two pieces of advice, but don't, don't try to boil the ocean. You have to be good at everything. Um, but if you really find something you're good at and you can deliver value to the customer, um, that's where you're going to continue to be relevant to your customers. And then make sure you're looking left and right in your accounts. Uh, and we'd be happy to come and, and talk to those accounts with you and, uh, and join you in a four-legged call or delivering some value as a vendor from an information point of view. Um, but I think that's a piece of advice that are sound for our, our channel partners in the market. It's something that they're going to have to get better at. They're going to have to start doing. A lot of them are already doing it. Um, but if you haven't, it's uh, I'll give you that as my kind of best piece of advice to stay relevant in this new kind of cloud environment. All right. Brilliant. Some some sound advice, both from the customer perspective and from the channel perspective there. Appreciate it. I think we've done a good job of, of kinding, kind of setting the um, the groundwork for what you guys are, are doing in the data center space, but would appreciate the opportunity to uh, to revisit this. And I know we'll have a chance to uh, to chat with both of you uh, in videos on the site uh, in the near future. Be looking for that, dear listener. Um, and perhaps we'll we'll reconvene here to uh, to talk further as well. Um, gentlemen, thanks so much for taking the time. Any uh, any parting shots for the Canadian channel before we sign off here today? Uh, I just say um, today is my daughter's uh, 13th birthday, so it's a uh, it's a special treat for me to be the the uh, parent of a teenager. I don't know how emotionally <laughs> I feel about that, but uh, I'd love to chat with all our partners and uh, share uh, kind of war stories about our our uh, children growing up as I'm out in the market in the next couple of months uh, talking about our data center group. To me, I would say I, I would end up with this uh, back to, uh, to to partnerships. We believe innovation is accelerated. It can happen faster through partnerships versus uh, vertically um, locked in proprietary systems. Um, so we're not only partnering um, with folks that are leaders, but we just believe that that's the way innovation will accelerate. Um, we embrace that, um, and we believe that gives not only choice, uh, but better solutions at a, in a faster time frame um, um, than, than some of these locked-in uh, proprietary things that our competitors are doing. Um, there's a lot of value for our channel partners uh, to be part, uh, to be in it with us, to actually solution for the end customer. Every customer is at a different place in their journey mm -hmm. to cloud. Um, our business model is um, leading and, and working with the channel. This is an opportunity for all our channel partners to work with us and solution and customize and localize offering for all of our customers, our, in, our, our combined uh, end customers. All right, brilliant. Thank you both so much for your time. I appreciate it. So there you have it, Lenovo's data center strategy. And as we mentioned towards the end of the interview, you can check the site next week and the week after that when we'll have video interviews up with Don and Stefan, uh, respectively chatting a bit more about hyperconverged infrastructure from a technology and from a channel standpoint, both very interesting add-ons to this conversation. I'd like to thank Don and Stefan for joining us for this chat and sharing their view. And of course, thank all the site sponsors, including Lenovo, for their support in making all of this possible. Last of all, I'd like to thank you for listening today. And hey, we'll be back in the very near future with another edition of the ChannelBuzz.ca podcast. But until then, I'm Robert Dutt for ChannelBuzz.ca, and I'll see you around the channel.